Let me pull you into something most people, even many history fans, never learn. The Vikings had a way to heat their homes that didn't rely on flames, charcoal, or constant fuel. It wasn't magic, and it wasn't guesswork. It was a deliberate engineering choice, so effective that the principle still works today in off-grid cabins and survival shelters. If you've ever wondered how people thrived in Scandinavian winters long before chimneys were reliable or indoor fires were safe, this is one of those overlooked answers that changes the way you see Viking life entirely. We talk a lot about longhouses, we talk about hearths, but almost nobody talks about the floor itself, the hidden system beneath the straw, clay and planks that quietly stabilised heat through the night. And by the time you finish this guide, you'll understand why the smartest builders today still borrow this exact trick whenever they need passive heat without fuel. So let's get into it, because this one deserves a place in every survivalist knowledge kit. The secret begins beneath the floor where the Vikings built thermal mass into the structure. Viking longhouses weren't just dirt floors with straw thrown around. Underneath that top layer, there was usually a deliberate foundation made of compacted earth-crushed stone clay, or even sand. This wasn't random. Those materials store heat incredibly well. During the day, heat from the central hearth would radiate outward and sink into that dense layer. At night, when the fire died down, the floor didn't instantly go cold. Instead, the stored heat slowly released upward, keeping the living space warmer for hours without a flame burning. This principle is called thermal mass today. But centuries before the terminology existed, the Vikings understood how it worked simply by experience. They knew stone held warmth, they knew clay retained heat longer than wood, and they built accordingly. And if you've spent time in an earth lodge, a root cellar, or even a well-insulated mud house, you already know how powerful this passive heating can be. Above the thermal layer, Vikings used a mix of straw-woven mats or timber planks. Straw acted like insulation, creating a soft buffer between the warm mass below and the cold air above. Timber planks added durability while still allowing heat to move slowly upward. In some longhouses, archaeologists found evidence of raised wooden floors over compacted clay, an early version of what we might call radiant floor heating. The layering mattered because insulation slows heat loss, and the planks distributed warmth evenly rather than in isolated hot spots. This kept the interior temperature stable, not sweltering, but comfortable enough to matter during long nights. A survival shelter today, built with the same stratified layers, thermal mass on bottom, insulation above, breathable floor surface on top, will perform almost identically. So, a longhouse wasn't just a big rectangle, you know. Its proportions were actually quite intentional. Long, narrow structures are just easier to heat because, well, the warmth radiates laterally and there's less air volume to warm up. And those low ceilings, they trapped the heat exactly where people lived and slept. The hearth was placed centrally, not for decoration or anything like that, but because it allowed the floor to absorb heat in all directions. That warmth would spread through the compacted ground, and then, over time, gradually rise. Even the benches built along the sides sat just above 
this warmed zone. A well-built Viking home, believe it or not, created something like a passive heating bubble without needing a constant fire. If you're thinking of building a survival shelter today, the same rules still apply. Keep the footprint narrow, the ceiling low, and place your main heat source where the floor can soak up and redistribute that warmth. This reduces fuel use drastically, and, you know, it really protects you once the fire dies. A wet floor loses heat fast, and the Vikings knew that. Their floors often included drainage layers, sand, gravel or crushed stone, that pulled moisture downward away from the surface. Some longhouses were slightly crowned in the centre, so liquids flowed toward the edges rather than pooling. Dry material stores heat. Wet material bleeds it out. This is why the Viking method works so well. And in practical survival terms, if you build a thermal mass floor in a shelter, always keep it dry. Start with gravel, then compacted earth or clay. Even in a basic lean-to or pit hut, this step alone can raise nighttime temperatures noticeably. If you ever need to warm a shelter without burning fuel all night, just recreate the Viking system on a small scale. Start by flattening and compacting the ground. Add a layer of stones or gravel so you know moisture drains downward. On top of that, pack clay, soil or sand tightly, anything dense enough to store heat. When you build a fire nearby, let that floor bake for hours. Once you extinguish the fire, simply lie or sit above the warm mass. Add straw or evergreen boughs to insulate it and, well, top it with planks, mats or even clothing. The floor will radiate heat through the night, especially if the shelter is wind-tight and low-ceilinged. If you want the full longhouse effect, build your shelter long and narrow, place your fire in the centre and sleep along the sides. The thermal floor will take care of you once the flames die down. This is why Viking homes stayed warm when other cultures struggled. They weren't relying only on fire. They were relying on physics. Their floor system gave them stable, passive warmth in an unforgiving climate. That's the kind of historical engineering that deserves more attention, especially in modern survival settings where fuel is limited and efficiency is everything. If you learned something new today, and want more deep-cut historical survival techniques like this, make sure you subscribe to Warfield Survival and share this video with someone who appreciates real, forgotten, ancient engineering.